Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing Ricard Pastis. This review was conducted using the Bespoke Unit liquor formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can either use at home for your own spirits or use as a quick reference if you don't have the time to hear me waffle on about this alcohol. Head to the description below and find the link to the review, which will provide you with the full PDF version, which will give you an overview of this alcohol, its characteristics, and some cocktail and pairing suggestions. Pastis is one of those beverages that you love or you hate or you've never even heard of. Indeed, it was actually invented uh, following the ban of absinthe in 1915. Absinthe was considered to be a, a drink that caused madness, although much of that has been disproven. And in fact, it was associated with a number of accidents, murders, and deaths throughout the whole of France and abroad. For example, there was one story of a worker who had drunk some absinthe and then killed his pregnant wife. The part that they missed out was that he was doused up on all sorts of wine and cognac and then had a dash of absinthe before actually committing the act. It was also associated with the Enfant Terrible and the Romantics of the late 19th century. And uh, these people who spent most of their time, these artists and writers in either Montparnasse or in Montmartre, were considered to be a little bit wild and too counterculture. So therefore, absinthe ended up being kind of a scapegoat for other issues and concerns and anxieties of the French government. Although there is still the reputation that absinthe does have some health issues. Anyway, I've already gone off on a tangent, so I'm going to make this a little bit quicker. Pastis was introduced as a legal alternative to absinthe as it was considered to use a type of aniseed that didn't have the same ill and hallucinogenic effects. The first one was introduced in 1918 by Jules Félix uh, Pernaud, which you may have heard of, and the second one that came out was in 1932, and that was by Paul Ricard. The two companies then fused in 1975 to form the Pernod Ricard that we all know and love today. That's enough history, let's jump straight into the drink. Ricard Pastis is produced in Marseille, France, usually from a beet alcohol, and it has been produced and steeped with a variety of herbs and spices, such as the aforementioned aniseed, but also fennel, caraway, and sometimes ginger. Ricard Pastis is found at 45% ABV, much higher than the initial 30% ABV, which was first allowed around 1918 when they started to reintroduce aniseed-based drinks. It is also part of an appellation, which is Pastis de Marseille. Anyway, let's jump into the actual analysis of this beverage. So here you can see I have it in a glass, but I'm not going to drink it like this. But I will take a look at the robe, the clarity, and also the nose as it's in this state. So first of all, we're looking at a dark brown liquid. Bernal is typically green, but this brown color is somewhat reminiscent of an aged absinthe, which tends to change color after a while. I believe it's referred as a furry malt absinthe, but it's important not to confuse pastis with absinthe. They're not the same thing, but that's another subject. The clarity is, there's a slight cloudiness to it, but it's relatively clear. There's a little bit of residue. If you sort of rub it, between your palms, it does get quite sticky, which is an indication of the different types of uh, additives that have been used in this, such as sugar. The legs are surprisingly thick and large, if you take a look at its visometric potential, and in terms of depth, you're looking at a very deep and intense color. When it comes to the nose, you're looking at an overall unctuous and sweet uh, nose feel. The bouquet is quite surprisingly rich. It's not too intense though, and the diversity of notes, well, you're not looking at many families here. In fact, the aromas consist of aniseed, fennel, and ginger, and it's pretty much dominated by aniseed. In terms of complexity, don't look for much complexity here. That would be something that you look for in a proper absinthe. So I'm not gonna drink it like this. Actually, what I'm going to do is add some water, and typically you use Cold water, sometimes you can add ice as well, but I'm going to use water that is just below room temperature because I'd like to get all the aromas. And although it's much more pleasant when it's cooler, we really want to do a proper in-depth review here. So I'm going to do sort of a one to three ratio. Some people prefer one to five, and some people prefer a little bit less. But this is kind of a one to three. So you saw how it changed color? Now that is known as an ouzo effect or a louche. It is actually the aniseed essential oils that are called tarpenes. When suspended in an alcohol solution of over 30%, they're actually transparent, but as soon as you start to add water and it drops below the 30% mark, it will go cloudy. And that is a phenomenon that we see in ouzo, sambuca, 
absinthe and pasties to name but a few. Well, next thing is bottoms up. Overall, we're looking at a very sweet uh, flavor profile with a slight astringency in the mouthfeel. The opening consists pretty much of anise seed. Uh, there's some fennel, maybe a hint of bay leaf. As you get to the heart, it becomes a bit sweeter, a bit more unctuous. You're gonna get some Turkish delight, ginger, maybe a hint of toffee. And then the finish, there's gonna be maybe a bit of earth, caraway seed, and caramel. Overall though, pretty much you're just looking at anise seed, herbs, and essences. If you're fond of a uh, traditional Scandinavian aquavit, this is something to try. If you quite like gin, it's kind of a it's kind of a step away from gin. You're really looking at heavy spices, but if you're fond of the jun juniper in gin, maybe this would be worth tra trying out. If you like aniseed, this is definitely a drink for you. You're not looking much in complexity. The texture is gonna be quite, um, quite thick, almost viscous. The maturity, there, there isn't any. I mean, this has been steep, but it hasn't really been aged. There's not much depth. The harmony is overall quite balanced, but it leans very much towards the front of the palate because of the, uh, the sweet spice of the aniseed. The linger does last a long time on the palate, but that is because of the sheer power of these herbs. And then in terms of uh, versatility in uh, drinking, it's gonna be quite limited to certain occasions. And that leads me on to the experience. So first of all, in terms of its presentation, we're looking at this classic French bottle, which has a traditional design that's barely changed in the last, wow, it's been 90, 82 years. And in terms of packaging, you're not gonna get any. The cork quality, where you're looking at a screw top, the occasion, this is really a casual drink. As I said, it's not very versatile. This is something that we really have for an aperitif or uh, in the late afternoon, something as a refreshment on a hot summer's day. And then in terms of value, you're looking at about 15 uh, euros in France for a 70 liter bottle. Although if you, in the States, I imagine it's gonna be double that around uh, $30. Now that we've concluded the core review, we're gonna take a look at cocktails and pairings. And this is just a thought exercise we have at the bottom right hand side of the uh, review formula. Uh, first of all, in terms of cocktails, honestly, I would just enjoy this with ice and water. You could also, I've been hearing about a lot of uh, other cocktails. One of them is Je suis Marseille, which I saw on a website the other day, which uh, consists of vodka, cognac, and pastis. Sounds like quite a heady, heady drink, but it does consist of uh, beverages that comes from the south and the southwest of France. Could be an interesting one. The vodka being Grey Goose, of course. Uh, there are also other ones with uh, fruit syrup, lemon juice. Uh, I've seen another one with mezcal and chartreuse. And otherwise, you could, could try and uh, sort of twist on a mojito with some white rum and lime. You might want to cut these down a little bit with some juices or water, given that this is a 45% alcohol. But if you want a short and potent uh, cocktail, it could be an interesting ingredient to introduce. The person to really ask is probably Reinhardt, who is a reviewer here on Bespoke Unit. Otherwise, leave a comment in the description below if you want any other suggestions, and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Then when it comes to pairings, as I mentioned earlier, this is really an aperitif drink. So you really want to consider things like cold cuts, hams, uh, pistachio nuts, and tapenade. However, for those who enjoy a good cigar with a refreshment, this is actually a really interesting choice for a cigar that we reviewed not long ago, or hasn't yet been released, it depends when this video comes out, which is the Placencia Ama del Campo, which has a distinctive anise note in the first third. Um, that being said, the, uh, the profile of, an, uh, of a pastis is quite potent, as I said, so, it's gonna be a challenging one to pair with the cigar where it's not just going to crush the cigar's nuances. But if you like Connecticut cigars, then you're in luck. Because of their mild profile and their creaminess, that would be an excellent pairing with a pastis. For example, a Nub Connecticut. Anyway, that gives you my review of uh, Ricard Pastis. Personally, it's a drink that I absolutely enjoy on a hot summer's day, uh, on a terrace somewhere. And uh, with the confinements and the lockdowns, it's been a long time since I've been able to enjoy one in the proper season. So hopefully those days will come back. If you're fond of uh, French culture or you wanna try a unique uh, drink, this is something you should at least sample. You'll love it, you'll hate it once you've heard about it. Anyway, that's all for me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, for, give us a subscribe for more, and leave a comment if you have any questions or your own thoughts about uh, Ricard Pastis. 
Until the next video, head to bespokeunit.com. You can also go to bespokeunit.com forward slash spirits to learn more about spirits. You can see all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something that you'll love.